have found them. Uses of the airplane include hobby, sport, mail, and freight delivery, as well as military and passenger service. And with 20 seconds to spare, you're really getting the hang of the in-the-book questions. Nice review. Thanks, it makes sense. Great. Hey, while Nikki and Audrey are doing the research for the next round of the Olympics, I thought we'd focus on the other types of questions, those that are in your head. Okay, but if the answers are already in my head, then any answer is right. Ah, uh -huh. nice try, Ryan. You still have to apply the question-answer relationship strategy to think through the correct answer. I'll show you. Grab the book we were using yesterday. Hello, hamster. Here we come. <laughs> Hold that thought. Will Ryan and the Literacy Olympics team get a head start on the competition by understanding in your head questions? Will the QA4 spots continue to be a valuable learning tool for question-answer relationships? Be sure to watch the QA4 spots and Literacy Olympics as part of your own literacy workout and join the knowledge seekers in this episode of Thinking Aloud. Martin is getting the team into shape by helping them understand question-answer relationship strategy. The team members are learning that answers to questions have a variety of sources and that question types signal where answers can be found. The two places or sources to look for answers about text you have read are in the book and in your head. There are two types of in-your-head questions as well. Author and me questions require you to pull from your own knowledge and experience as well as clues from the author to develop the answer. The answers to on my own questions are not located within the text. Instead, they're actually found in your head. When you find an in the book question, you can go immediately back into the text to find the answer. However, a lot of questions are in your head questions. There are two types of in my head questions. One is called author and me because you have to combine information from the author and what you already know to determine an answer. You have to look for clues. Oh, like Q. Lock Holmes. We have to use our investigative skills to predict, infer, and draw conclusions. Okay, Super Sleuth. Let's try a few more questions. Read the hamster passage again. Hello, hamster. Ethan counted his money. I have enough to buy a hamster, he said. Ethan picked out a hamster and a cage with climbing tubes. He also bought an exercise wheel. But when Ethan put his hamster in the cage, he burrowed in the bedding. His hamster slept all day long. I didn't know hamsters were so sleepy, Ethan said disappointed. In the quiet of the night, Ethan heard something. It was his hamster racing on the exercise wheel. Ethan watched as his hamster skittered up the tubes, twitched his whiskers, and munched his treats. I don't have a night owl, he laughed. I have a night hamster. <laughs> That's why I have fish. <laughs> now, if you were being questioned about the story, you might be asked, why did Ethan's hamster sleep all day and stay awake all night? Now, when I think about how to answer this question, I think about what the author of the passage has written. His hamster slept all day long. In the quiet of the night, his hamster was racing on the exercise wheel. It skittered up the tubes, twitched its whiskers, and munched its treats. I also think about what I already know about animals that sleep during the day and are awake at night. They are called nocturnal animals. I am able to answer this question by fitting together the information in the text with what I already know. So I know this is an author and me question type. Now I can answer the question. Hamsters are nocturnal animals. So we're not making up answers, just thinking about what was written and relying on what we know to build the answer. Right, but there is a second type of question. These questions are called on my own questions. They occur when the answer to the question can be answered from what you already know. You really don't even have to read the text. You rely on your own experience to answer. This sounds like the question's quota answers. The answer comes from within you. We have to evaluate, judge, choose, support, and give our opinion. Quota is my favorite. Mine too. Let's try a question. What is your favorite animal to visit at the pet store? And why? Hold it. On your own means on your own. <laughs> when I see or hear a question like this, 
I know it is asking me to think about my own experiences and asks for my opinion. It also asks me to support my answer with a reason. I think about the many trips I've made to pet stores and the animals I like to see when I'm there. I'm allergic to all animals with hair, so the dogs and cats make me sneeze. But I do like to watch the brightly colored fish swim fast. My answer to this question is, fish are my favorite animals to see when I visit a pet store. I like them best because of their bright colors and I like how fast they swim. I don't like to visit the dogs and cats because I'm allergic to their fur and I sneeze when I'm around them. It's that easy? It's that easy. Quick, what type of question is, what leads you to believe Ethan likes hamsters? Hulock Holmes, author in me. Right, what is your opinion of hamsters? Quota, in my head. I think you're ready. I'd hate to be that other team. This is one team that is ready to be questioned, and you will too if you spend time with the question-answer relationship strategy. Use the characteristics of in-your-head questions to determine how to answer them. Success is within your grasp if you just keep thinking aloud.